Hey, what's up guys? My name is Rob Jr. and this is my channel Creative Rob. Thanks for joining me. And as always, here's my trusty sidekick, Dean the Dog. He's taking a nap. He had a, a rough night, I guess. <clears throat> so today I'm going to be sharing with you a large scale charcoal portrait. Um, this is about four feet by four feet and four inches. Um, the the paper I'm using is uh, it's a watercolor roll, um, cold press, uh, and this is my first large scale drawing. So I was kind of um, experimenting to see uh, what would work. Um, so really, I just cut this off the roll and um, pinned it to the wall. Um, I don't have an easel that big. Uh, I wasn't sure how to tackle it, but this seemed to work pretty well. Although, I would say um, working with paper off the roll, especially this thicker watercolor paper, it wanted to roll in on itself the whole time. Um, I was having to deal with the the pins popping out occasionally and I'd have to put them back in you know not not a big deal um, anyway so on with the the drawing uh, I did as you saw earlier I started off with a circle and then an oval that, sh that represents the side of the face and then I'll split that in the middle and make a, a line down that and that just helps me uh, with the perspective and as, as you see our hand like this what I did is drew the circles for the knuckles and then would draw ovals for uh, this part of the fingers um, you know as a, a rough outline it just helps um, with placement and as you can see here, I mean, it looks, the hand looks pretty good. I was pretty happy with that. That, That's um, one of the things that um, in this process um, started off pretty good in the very beginning. Now, I like to think, at least with my style and some of the people that I follow, instead of drawing drawing with charcoal I like I like to think of it more as painting so you're gonna see me do a lot of smearing um, I'll draw some lines and I'll smear them out um, it just helps create tone um, and and as you've heard me say before with this uh, with charcoal it's a very forgiving medium especially if you're using the the soft soft charcoal now for this <clears throat> I did special order this charcoal right here and this is the whole stick it's huge and it was a lot of fun to work with Uh, I'm, I'm going to open it up so you can check it out. Look at it. it's, this whole thing is a giant charcoal stick. Now, I don't want to get my hands dirty right now. I set my computer and recording equipment. But, um,. Yeah, if you ever are needing some large charcoal, this stuff right here, I ordered it on Amazon and um, worked terrific. Loved it. <clears throat> so, so basically what I'm doing, doing this whole time is pretty much adding and subtracting. Adding more charcoal on, taking it off, smearing it around. Um, I do have a, a reference I'm using. I'm looking at an iPad. Uh, I was not focused on um, making this. 
I wasn't focused on making this as real as I could get or to match the photo. I'm really just using the pose. Plus, it's, you know, if you're using a reference and you didn't take the photo, you really got to change it up or uh, you're going to make that photographer mad. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, you're not really supposed to copy uh, photography. Um, Shepard Ferry got in trouble with that, with the um, Obama painting he did. <clears throat> Which, you know, I think he, he tried to, to hide the fact that he did use that, and he didn't even, I mean, he totally traced it. Um, at the same time, it's a, it's a weird concept. It's like, well, you don't own that person. You... You snapped an image of that person. Why is it? Uh, why can't I use that? You know what I mean? But no, I, I do get it. It's kind of like if, if someone took a, a photo of a tree, I can't use that photo I can use it as reference I guess you just can't trace it and then you got to make it like 60% different um, but then again if I go and stand where that person took the photo is that okay you know it's like because it, it's gonna look the exact same photography is weird and if any of you guys have some insight on that that I'm missing or not understanding, feel free to leave it in the comments. I'm pretty, pretty open-minded and open to uh, other ideas. So, <clears throat> kind of went off topic here, but um, what I like to use to do the smearing is I'll just get a paper towel. There's probably some better things to use, but um, that seems to be, that seems to work for me. <clears throat> and there I'm using a blender stump. Got a huge one. And again, I, I got a good deal on Amazon. I think it was like 10 bucks and I got this case here with that's just full of blending stumps <laughs> now if you haven't tried large-scale drawing I would highly recommend it it is a blast it is so much fun it's exhausting um, you know Make sure you get your drawing up high enough. I wish mine would have been a little bit higher. I was doing too much bending over and squatting. <laughs> it was a little bit of a workout. My back was sore the day after. So this took me about a day. I worked on this um, a day and a morning. And you know it was off and on throughout the day. And then I got up first thing in the morning to finish it off. And now here I'm using my um, kneaded eraser, you know, um, to subtract charcoal to add highlights. If you're not familiar with with the with these, if you're a beginner at charcoal, you can form these to shapes like this to get very detailed um, erase marks to add highlights. It's almost like you're drawing with this but subtracting. Um, and what you want to do is if you're doing some heavy erasing this thing is going to turn black and it will stop erasing so you need to start folding it. And the more you fold it, uh, it kind of cleans it up and you can erase again. 
It's a very awesome eraser, very great tool. Um, I've also I also used a paintbrush um, to help um, blend that charcoal in, and you want to use a very very soft brush. Um, I don't have one handy to show, but basically what you want is a watercolor brush. Those are very soft, and you just want to. Um, lightly brush the surface. I, I guess it just depends on what you're trying to do, but yeah. The watercolor brushes work for me, they work best with the charcoal. Now, I'm looking down because I'm looking at my monitor so I can do like a video voiceover. If you're wondering why I'm constantly looking down. Now, what attracts me to charcoal uh, and this style? I really like the rough style, the sketchy style, the loose charcoal drawing. I like, I like, I like to get it messy. I like to run my fingers through it to smear it. Um, I like the sketchy lines to show. I like it to look like a drawing. I like it to to show emotion, and I do that through this smudging and erase. You know, sometimes I'll just get that eraser and in, in certain areas uh, just to rough it up. I'm I'm also using the eraser to uh, create highlights in the hair. Now, if you're an experienced charcoal uh, artist, you you know all this already. But maybe just by watching, you might get some ideas to help you out. But uh, for the beginners, I'm sure this would be very helpful. Now, do you see? I had some problems with the jaw line. I was too uh, cut in too much, making the face too narrow. And all you have to do is, uh, you, you know, use your eraser and widen it, and smear it out. And I mean, I love it. It, it charcoal's very forgiving. See right there. That's what I was. I'm roughing it up. I'm grabbing the eraser and I'm just. Whip, 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 whip. <laughs> you got to make those sound effects when you do it too. And then I also will do the same thing with that stick of charcoal. I'll um, kind of randomly just do it. And under the eyes, I actually use charcoal powder and a palette knife with a velvet tip to create the dark circles. And that's a that's a fun tool to use, and um, I would like to do that some more. Maybe a whole a whole drawing that way. So here's the next morning. I went, <clears throat> woke up. I'm trying to finish it off. Just had some detail work, and I believe it's the next morning. If it's not, it's close to it. Kind of adding in some highlights. Um, when I finish the charcoal part, I do spray it with a Craylon fixative, workable fixative. Um, I do that a couple times, and then I'm gonna go on top. With, there we go. There's the Craylon fixative. Uh, you do want to open up your windows and doors and turn the fan on when you use that. Now here, that is a red pastel, oil pastel on top. 
and then I'm going to spray it again with the fixative after that. Now, <clears throat> I hope you guys enjoyed that. So what I'll be showing now is a quick one minute time lapse of the whole process. Um, I hope you guys like it. That's the final product right there, and that's Dean the dog. Um, if you guys enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Ring that bell. And stay tuned to some more awesome work. All right, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Adios.